Spitfire, but it really didn't feel like a game that was just one side favoring another. It was really Dyer. much more back and forth, a very interesting Dyer hero picks, and pick. a lot of dependency on certain objectives. Roshan was a big deal for Empire because that big Dire side every time. So seeing Kaipi going up against Danish Bears, which might be on a similar tier level, mm -hmm. I think Kaipi will be able to kind of thrive and show off what they could do if they, they have the team coordination to back it up. There were a couple plays here and there from Kaipi that a lot of people will look to question, but if they can shore up those weaknesses, if they can pull themselves together, Mm -hmm. I think that they could actually do really Ten well in this matchup. Remaining. Both of these teams seem like, and this could be just an early impression, one of those teams Five where they, they pull out wins when they shouldn't, but then they can't get wins when they should, oh, kind of God. a thing. Where, you know, I've seen Kai Pai pull, we've hauled in the first team. round, taking down Empire. Now, Empire obviously is a new roster, so take it as you will. And Danish Bears be able to get uh, huge wins recently even over Na'Vi. Uh, so we'll see how they're going to be able to approach each other in this matchup. Uh, and also I'm very, very excited to see how the meta has kind of begun to slowly change a bit. We're not in this new chapter where we've received a balance patch, but people are starting to maybe experiment a bit in the sense that they like to be pulling out stuff that we haven't been seeing a whole lot of here. And for the European side of things, Kaipi Dyer actually opening back. up early with a dazzle with their yeah. first pick. That's very interesting in its own right, unless that was a throwback to itself. Danish Bears, their one-two punch will be Invoker Bane, and then Kaipi will go back for their second support already, Blaze, and get the chin. Now, it is worth noting that Ten both Mad and Come With Me have been playing a lot of jungle actively. I believe Come With Me is the Chen player between the two Five of them, and that means uh, Mad would be taking the lane. But even still, picking up two supports in Phase 1, it's Reserve really time. building up the backbone of the team in terms of early push intensity. But I don't feel like either of those could be contested picks. Like, Dazzle or Chen could easily be in Phase 2. Radiant I'd rather have seen something like a Beastmaster or some kind of early game offlaner. Obviously not the Nature's Prophet, but just something that gets involved early Radiant and then you secure your pick. cores. But no matter the, the order, they're still going to have that option if they want to go with it. And instead they're banning out heroes like Bounty Hunter and Darkseer so their Chen can thrive. Dyer but his army doesn't get decimated so quickly and of course he has a better time going in the jungle while ah, their next pick is actually going to be mm. what brings me to my next question of what roles we're going to see for Kai P. In their match versus Empire, we had Bone 7 carry, yep. then Bone 7 offlane, then Bone 7 back to carry. Oh. With the Batrider on the field, I feel like we actually might be seeing that offlaning Bone 7 Batrider. The bat famous rider. Bone Batrider, one that may have been known to innovate Ten the certain seconds, ruby remaining. red boots of travel on the build. So Bone 7 always brings Five some of the most entertaining remaining. Dota. Uh, obviously, this guy has continued to strive and you know perfect his art and and Reserve you know to, to be on a team like Cloud Nine and now to see everyone else from the team be able to find at least some sort of success and some big Valve tournament wins, he is still overdue. And I think there's a lot of Bone Seven fans oh, out there that will certainly agree with that. Um, on the note of how they opened this draft, pick. though, I, I agree with you that it, it does feel a bit out of left field. If you're usually pulling out something like a Dazzle as a first pick, it feels like you're baiting to get something huge, Dyer maybe in the second back. set of picks there, but that's not happening. Now a possible confli uh, conflict of jungle between the Chen and the Batrider if things don't work out for Bone in the lane. So this is going to be interesting. And Danish immediately pick up a great response to the Batrider in the Oracle remaining. with that false promise. It's like an instant get-out-of-jail-free card against Five the Lasso. And then Kai P going to be going for the classic here, Blaze. The Sing Sing Kunkka, it looks like. Reserve time. Yeah, that should be really interesting. Now, the previous uh, iteration of Sing Sing Kunkka in the match for his Empire, I feel like it was a little bit stronger because he was able to use the X marks the spot to kite the Ursa very effectively. Mm -hmm. Up against the Chirocopter, sure, he's short range, but he's usually got that high natural movement speed, not as, not as prone to being kited unless Chen is really on point. So overall, the X mark, it's going to be fun for him to play around with. He's still going to be able to get some cool combos off here. Um, but Gyrocopter going for the early BKB, as well as the fact that he's just not as easily kited, I feel the Koka pick is a little bit weaker. That being said, this is still a heal lineup with a Kunkka, and that in of itself becomes very scary. Dyer Between Shadow team. Wave, Hand of God, Mechanism, and the Boat Buff, the effective HP of Kaipi is going to be outstanding. So cancels, Safe Laner, whatever it may be, can be as glass can as you want it to be. I mean, you could go for a Ember Spirit or Fan Assassin, like anything that normally seems really squishy. And with these heroes behind him, bulk him up to an amazing amount. So I'm hoping to see a very aggressive core from Cancel. 
Would it be so far fetched to make the call for something like, let's say, uh, I don't know, cancel enough to see his hero pool, but something that screams out to me, something like a life stealer here. Very good yeah. against the gyrocopter. Bat riders typically your good vehicle to get into the action. Koka could help time. you out being able to transfer across the map or at least back to fountain. And even Chen and Dazzle both to bail you Radiant out of trouble. And, uh, well, it is going to be the Ember Spirit once again. Not going to lie, when I was trying to research a bit about the new Kaipi, there was a lot of scrutiny against uh, a certain cancel and a certain Ember Spirit. He's going to oh grab it goodness. once again. And then Beastmaster, by the way, is the final pickup for Danish Bears. I can't help but feel like Danish Bears just really got a well-solid, this-era kind of style draft. And Kaipi put something unique for themselves together. Do you agree with that, Blaze? And, and what is your overall uh, thought on how the, the draft's going to be working out for both yeah, teams? Yeah, I mean, I feel like Danish Bears definitely have the, the more resolute core roster, really easy to execute, really easy to get those pickoffs on the Ember Spirit early. And as you were mentioning, Cancel really did not have a good time on the Ember Spirit the last we saw him. He actually had some record low GPMs until Oof. the second half of the game where the comeback goal started kicking in. But like he was not even able to get, able to get boots of travels in 20 minutes. Seconds, like, it was remaining. disastrous. This was a really underfarmed Ember. This He had to Five just go for remaining. kind of desperation. Battle Flurry crit, defend high ground as best you can, and then he ended up... Uh, to an extent, losing the game for them with one single movement, which, I mean, obviously, when your back is against a wall, it's it's tough, but it's just one of those things where the team is definitely depending on him to, to show up to play in a much bigger way this time around. Um, uh, yeah, I feel like just Danish Bears have such a, a good lineup for picking heroes off really quickly. Uh, yeah, I'm get, I guess I'm looking at the Dazzle. If you are able to get a fiend script or roar on the dazzle then you should be able to take him out without a grave and then from there the the kills start rolling in yeah i mean they if you're able to kind of isolate the right targets here on kaipi they're not going to be able to execute the how their lineup has so much longevity to it here um but i, I want to be convinced that they can get something done really in the early game and mm -hmm. it's not the easiest thing ever because you're banking it a lot on the chen getting it done you know whether it be and I haven't seen his inventory yet. Uh, he has com already uh, grabbed up the first smoke here, so hopefully a great creep and hopefully a successful gank because if it doesn't start rolling, and we've seen this a lot from a lot of different Shens, uh, it just it seems like they're not able to put the pieces together. And you have a lot of that. You can say the same thing about a lot of the heroes already taken up from Kaipi here. A Kunkka, an Ember Spirit. If things don't go good from the start, you don't really have much to fall back on, and you're going to be a bit of a burden. So... I f can't help but feel like Hypey really going to be relying a lot on a successful laning stage to be able to segue into where the real peaking window is when they have a Bat Rider with a Blink Dagger. Hopefully, an Ember has boots to travel to globally participate, and of course, Kunkka will have his boat good to go. So. We'll see if that's going to be the case or not, folks. Game is underway. You are tuning in to the Star Ladder slash iLeague Invitational. We're going to be heading off to Kiev once again for a good land adventure, and we got to find out which European squad is going to be qualifying into that land here. We have Kaipi facing off against DB, a.k.a. the Danish boys. And, uh, well, we're going to see... How Kaipi are going to be able to do it? They've had a bit of hot and cold success. There's a lot of hype behind this team. A lot of hype behind a certain sync player. And look at this. A very unique start. Straight down the middle with a five-man smoke here, Blaze. Coming out from the Danish Bears. They have great first blood potential. Level one fight with Ace on the gyrocopter. And Mad. Uh-oh, yeah, the captain. He is him. a bit too uh, close to trouble here. Did not suspect them coming up from behind. I don't think anyone would. So that's going to be leading into a good catch from the Oracle into a rocket barrage. And Oracle even picks up the first blood. It is going to be the Danish Bears who strike first. This is one of the rotations and the paths that I've been expecting since 6.86 ever pushed that tier 1 tower back. Uh, the fact is it doesn't reveal invis, it doesn't break smoke, so there's a lot of potential for people to go in. And you see that in the mid game, but I've actually never seen that used in a level 1 clash until now. And it's it's obviously very effective. Everybody expects the danger to come from the east, and then you just kind of hit them from the backside of Oracle. Uh, he's almost as good as Tusk at securing the first blood when you're going for the smoke plays, because as soon as you get vision, you get the fortunes end out, and you just allow your team to, to close in on them very effectively. So, good start there. Obviously, the first blood will go to Oracle, and uh, it'll just be a one-for-one one on the bounty runes. He supports, you know, you're in... It feels natural more to give the core the first blood so they can have that much more, or more of a better time. Maybe a mid laner would be your best case. But, hey, supports can use a lot with that first blood gold. You get quicker boots. You know, maybe you get to secure that second set of wards a lot sooner. An early TP scroll that you might not have had usually to rotate and help out. So, 
Uh, already going right to work. Cancel steps in, and uh, he, he may have had a hard time last time he picked up the Ember, but against an Oracle, it ain't going to get any easier, Blaze. I mean, this uh, Fortune's End able to easily purge off his precious shield, uh, and then, of course, that high burst nuking damage against what could be a very frail life pool. Uh, this could be a, a hard laning phase for him. Yeah, they'll run the stout shield and have the dazzle next to him, so the boar harassment should be something they can mitigate to an extent, but even still, that low armor takes its toll pretty quickly, and uh, yeah, around level 3 and 5, when that flame guard should allow him to be extremely durable, and the fortune's end, no matter how much little damage it deals, will be able to take it off, that's, that's going to be a really big deal. So that lane's going to be very interesting, but also top lane. I, I'm watching Bone 7 here, and I'm thinking, okay, when is he going to get his level 2? Because usually as Batrider, you have to kind of... Hold on to your skill point at level 1, say, okay, if I need Firefly to get over a cliff, then I'll, I'll reserve it. But in this case, he wants to get involved in the lane, and that requires the Napalm. Yeah, it does have, of course, this little jungle camp to fall back on. Might wait for the stack, or but mm -hmm. finds a bit more value in obviously being there for the rune. If it is going to be contested whatsoever, uh, it will be interesting to see how it's, things are going to be spanning uh, out for Bone7 and his signature grab, the Batrider. Nice little homage to David Bowie, of course, with the Ziggy Stardust name. And speaking of names, though, Blaze, help me out here. Mid laner Invoker. Is it bad if I call him Ping <laughs> for the rest I, of the I, game? I think that's fine. Uh, Ping Vin. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I don't know the guy very well, but I have seen him play a couple times. He's been able to execute pretty well at the mid lane, and, and it loves those kind of intelligence heroes that have very finesse-type spell, so I think the Evoker suits him pretty well. One day, maybe, he makes it to a LAN, I'll, I'll hit him up for a beverage, and he can tell me how to pronounce his name properly. But in the meantime, I'll try my best here with Mr. Ping, who has currently got 10 CS to Sing Sing's 11. He's also in a bit of trouble here, Blaze. There's going to be the X, leading into a nice torrent. Penitence, the, the Centaur steps in, Darkness and, and yeah, there's not much like Even Bone gets involved in this one, and it is going to finally get Kaiki on the board and even things up one-to-one. -one. I've got to say, I am really surprised that the Invoker opted for Quaz Wex in this environment. EMP is really strong against uh, the Chen Creeps, against Dazzle, and Chen himself, and, and can be effective against Kunkka if he doesn't go for the right item build, but I'm really worried that they're not going to have as much kill potential mm -hmm. going for the, the quick pickoffs. Like, if he has Exhort, Sunstrike Roar is such an easy combo. Every time Matt is within Roar Rage, he's dead, and uh, the Beastmaster is going to create so many kill and assist opportunities, but going for this Quaz Wex, while they will be able to, to burn the mana of the team, I feel like Kaipi are happy to go like triple Arcane Boots. Uh, Sing off he goes for the Aether Lens anyway, so we can see Arcanes even on him, and I don't think the Quaz Wex is going to be as effective, potentially. Is any part of it the fact that usually in his bottom lane they are making a move for Mad here, some bits of burst damage, chains are going to be forced out, will catch off here onto the Beastmaster, stopping him in his tracks, but Oracle right by his side. They have a little bit extra sustain and deceptive nuking damage here with level 2 now into Purifying Flames. It'll do huge work, but at the same time, it's top lane where Bone 7, no, is going to be going down here. Does get caught off, and it will be uh, the Gyrocopter Ace who does pick that one up. Yeah, he almost got the Firefly away uh, into impassable terrain, but the fact is the Nightmare will lock him down and the Gyrocopter will finish him off. So, Base Boots up on Ace now. He's going to really be able to bully back this Batrider. And while the Batrider, Vote 7, has been trying to stack up his Secret Shop hard camp, uh, that's been actually sentried out at an interesting timing. It's not after the before the first spawn. It's after that spawn. Yeah. Uh, Preventing any potential stacks. Oh, Ping in trouble mid lane. He gets caught out. There's a nice little troll net. Locks him in place under the tower now. Sing getting hit pretty oh. hard. They'll be able to get the finish kill there with a turnaround from Chen. But Sing, oh, gets hit with the purifying flames. Now the heal. Oh, it's going to feel so nice on the way out. Now Beastmaster rotates through, but he's a little late to get involved in this skirmish. And we're back even once again, Blaze 2 to 2. So, from what I remember from Hester Joe Rotten, uh, I've, I've actually cast this guy, Blake, I think back in 2012, like late 2012 when he was playing in in-houses, and this guy, the one thing I remember about him very clearly is he's a very in-your-face player. This guy loves strength initiators, this guy loves to get very involved, we've seen that quite a bit in his laning versus cancel. And yeah, he's definitely going to be looking for opportunities when he hits the level 6. So uh, I, I do feel like the Exhort would have been stronger, but you had some ideas about the Wex? Oh, I was going to say, with the Wex, isn't the typical buildup uh, to go into something like an Orchid, which would be nice to have against an Ember, or is that off the radar in this particular matchup and could, you know, lead to other downsides? 
I feel like the Ember's already going to be pretty reserved in his movement, or hopefully cancel is anyways, because if he's up against a Blink Beastmaster or a mobile Bane, maybe with an Aether Lens himself, it's going to be actually very difficult to get involved. Oh, Joe, though. Oh, man. my goodness. That heal damage. Cancel sets up a very nice chains lockdown, and then Matt hits him up with the serious heal. Beastmaster he chains up again, but Cancel isn't going to have enough firepower. Even Matt gets off a pot shot or two, but it's not going to be good oh. enough. And, oh, they get the second strike there at the end. Oracle hits him up with the purifying flims. And over in mid, they're going to throw the boat out here. The Evoker is dusted up, but they can't get the boat out in time. It is going to connect on the Bane, who just brain saps himself away. And the Torrent will be missing as well. Close exchange there on the mid lane. Could have been a very big kill. But the only casualty is actually going to be the Ember Spirit, yeah. of all things, down bottom. When he just, he needed that Siri Chains, but very, very quick response coming in from the Oracle. Too much uh, salvation at the mouth there. They saw the huge healing hit, and then they just were so bloodthirsty there was no turning back until they felt like they could get the kill, but it's never as easy as it seems, especially if an Oracle is involved in the lane in any sort of way and could get involved to help out with a, with a kill like that because one Quick Fate's Edict will nullify all additional magic damage and Ember Spirit does have a, a little share of it. And then next thing you know, Purifying Flames is going to get him right up, back up to heal. Meanwhile, top yeah, no, lane... Noya played that just perfectly. Yeah. That was actually really impressive. Very, very nice. And it already shows that. And it was one thing I looked over when I was looking at the history of the Danish Bears. This team, at least it's been a team for quite a while. And uh, I could imagine this team has a bit more practice and finesse involved than, than Kai P, where Kai P is a team of a bunch of very talented names and might not have that chemistry built up yet. Now we're actually going to be seeing an early gyrocopter rotation bottom. This could be extremely effective. There's no way they see this coming, and Ember's not 6 yet. Chains. Move in. Ace steps in. He's got his level 6. Huge call down, and it is going to be canceled. Going down once again. Back-to-back -back takedowns on your core Ember. Matt, a man on the run. There's no homing missile, but there's a rocket barrage. Can he get the grave off? He's got to start with the heal. There's going to be the grave. The purifying flames. Will not make it in time to burst him down, and Matt will make it away in the back of a TP there. But the bottom lane certainly is one now for Danish Bears if it wasn't before. Might turn this into a little bit of push potential on this Tier 1, but there's already a rotation back from Cancel here. Without a Dazzle nearby and a bird scouting him from above, he might need to be a little bit careful. I think he's in a lot of trouble. He didn't leave a remnant in the base, so they're oh, just going to dive him. No! He remnants. It makes it to the lane here. Oh, but they got him with the Q coming out from the Oracle. The burst is a takedown again. Oh, no. It's a bit of deja vu potentially from the last Ember performance. Well, top lane, they're making the move for the Bane. Self-sleep to try to dodge, but even though the stun will miss and the torrent, they'll still be able to chase him down. And it turns into a two-for-one all-day blaze. It looks like Mad made his return to the lane and also ended yeah. up dropping here at the bottom. He tried to help, just got, got caught out by the Invoker who made his rotation down. And I, I, when they had to have seen the Invoker make his move from mid, they, they knew that there were going to be four heroes there, not just three, and even with just the three, it was clearly enough for Kant, uh, to bring down Cancel unless he leaves a remnant in the base. So he failed to do that. He goes out for the TP forward, and, and it's just getting really bad for him very quickly. This is this is definitely a bit of deja vu, and and you got to wonder. It, where, like, they're picking the hero because he must feel confident on it. But after a loss like they had against Empire, you have to reevaluate that. And maybe he's played some really good pubs with the Ember recently or something, but it's obviously not clicking here. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know who Cancel is as a person, but I know there's a lot of drive from a lot of different players that one shaky performance could lead them to just try to quickly get redemption for themselves and, and give it another swing. Or maybe Mad just feels that Ember is the best fit for this draft and whether, you know, he played it bad last time or not it's, it's got to work here and now it, it could be either side of the coin but for now it's just looking Radiance like uh, not the best performance attack. we can only take yeah. it for what it is at the moment and and for now we'll have to see if copy are going to be able to find another way bone though walks into trouble he's got the boots to travel the bone build up but he's not going to be able to quickly make it away from this catch off coming in the beastmaster leads off with a debut of that primal roar and another kill swings the way to db I kind of find it funny that Boat 7, in response to get, getting killed off, he's like, oh, I have to spend my unreliable gold. So he buys two TP scrolls when he has Boots of Travel. So I guess oh, he's going to give that to his oh, friends. Oh, Bone. Yeah, luckily you can. The Ice Frog has allowed you and it's permitted. Oh, no, he's just sell him. He but... gets, oh, whatever. Oh, he that, sold that actually, he just straight up lost him 75 gold, but oh, it works. Oh, well, what? Efficiency in the economy department not really working so far for Bone, but they are going to be trying to make a work 
for the gank on the top lane here. Singh leads in with the help of the smoke. Easy axe. Now they bring out the call down, but it's not going to be enough. Dyro still good here. Now Bone has made his jump and has grabbed up the Dazzle, oh, or the Bane rather, but the Oracle's there with a false promise and gets the quick save for Ace. Nobody goes down. The damage follow-up just doesn't seem to exist at all for Kaipi. Now Singh has been able to make a move in and gets a kill onto the Bane, but they lose Bone as a response. Now here comes Ping, aka the Penguin, moving on forward. Dazzle keeps him safe with the Grave, but the right clicks continue to fly out, but he's going to be good. The heal for the Purifying Flames now going to be coming out through while well, Ace is in trouble. Fate's Edict, though, with the heal, will be able to save him up. Look at the body block work, though, coming out. Looks like Oracle's been able to find a turn off from the path to the left, but he is eventually swarmed from Kai P. He will make them sweat a little bit for it, but eventually they will take him down. It's a long-winded fight, Blaze. When the dust does settle, it looks like a potential two-for-one is the, uh, the answer at the end of the day. Really, really good response from the Bane of the Oracle, though. I figured that no, uh, we were going to be able to see Ryze get the Nightmare off on all those abilities. It was all just heading at the same time that Bane was, was entering his Nightmare range, but uh, getting the Oracle rotation on top of that is what actually sets them up to, to get some turnaround action there. Otherwise, it would just been a quick two kills. Now we're going to see that quick kill on bottom yep. as they just simply roar the Batrider. Very fast with the Boots of Travel, but... Without a blink or a four staff, it's it's still going to be him, but it's very immobile. Mid lane also in trouble here, Blaze. They lead in with a tornado EMP combo, and then with the assistant burst coming out from the Oracle, that purifying flames now at level four, 360 damage, it, and you can get it off multiple times, 2.25 seconds. It's easily done twice per gank here. Mid lane cancel has shown up. He has an Invis rune. Still lacking in the farm department, but with a big kill. Oh, that's going to be mad. Oh, and Bone Quickly got caught assassinated. Too. They sleep up Bone. Bane in a bit of trouble. Going to get healed up with a Fate Cedic and Purifying Flames combo, but Cancel has caught out Ace. Here comes the False Promise. Can they heal him up and keep him alive? They got the urn. That should be more than enough. He'll make it back to safety. Man, the Danish boys are really hard to break in this one. Kai P feel like they have to pull out everything to get anything done at all. Yeah, and this is not how the lineup was supposed to work. The Chen Dazzle was supposed to run over the early game. You see this army of centaurs. Uh, a lot of other creeps would be able to put out a huge amount of pressure. The centaurs, if they get close, can obviously do a lot of chain stunning, but I guess Singh is going to try to set them up for that. X Torrent Boat Combo, Fates Eat It, and that's it! Completely taken away! Ace, though, is going to be locked down from the centaurs coming out, but he's still going to be healed up and good. The sustain coming out from the Danish boys is just so good. And now with another pullback torrent combo. Call down though, will force Kai P away. They get the roar connection again on the bone. That's the third straight roar, all for bone. Now an X setup. Again though, with the Fates Edict, with the Purifying Flames, gonna be completely negated. But now they got the grip on to cancel here. But he's gonna be sent home promptly here coming out from Nate. He can quickly drop the remnant and make his return, but they made another catch with a follow-up onto Mad. Danish boys really evaluating the situation nicely here and get the quick isolated pickoffs. Now they're looking to go for the Chen, but chains do come out from Cancel. Doesn't matter. They still get that Chen. Now they look for Cancel. He's going to be forced to remnant forward, jump on back, but they've already caught a hold of him here. Ace has stepped in with a rocket barrage. Cancel, though, will be able to bottle up, and he might be able to make it to safety, but they're not letting up. They got the bird scouting him from above. The king now rushes in. They got him. Double kill for Ace. Ruthless are the bears from Dane. But finally, bone back now. Lasso quickly canceled for the <laughs> false promise. Nothing comes easy at all for Kai P. Now a call down comes from Ace. He gets healed up completely from the false promise. Bone goes down. Mad goes down again. Blaze, it's an absolute disaster for Kai P. They are just getting outplayed left, right, and center. Between Rise and Noya, the counterplay is there perfectly. And Ace is coordinating with them really well. I've seen well, the time that he was diving in mid, he was holding his one, not using it at the most obvious of times because he knew he could get the double heal for the false promise. Like he, they, they know so well how to make this work and how to time everything to just completely turn things around. The, the, their balance between offense and defense is immaculate. And, and while you could definitely say that Kaipi were a little bit out of position a couple of times here, it's still on Danish Bears that have capitalized on it. And 
forced Kaipi's hands. They try to gun down one person, and there's the immediate response from the supports. Now Oracle has the ether lens. There's no way that you can pull the carry far enough away from Oracle for him to respond. And they're even going to go for Roshan. They have now an 11 kill advantage before 16 minutes and a Rosh under their belt. Here comes Kaipi though, they want to contest, they've smoked, they're on the way, but it's too late. The Roche goes down, but it's not late enough. They've already crossed through the yellow light. It's turned red though, Blaze. They are going to be able to get a little bit of segregation, but it doesn't matter. They've gotten a hold of the Mighty Bone 7 there on the high ground with the help of a grip. The Dazzle Grave is good, but it's not going to be good enough. They take him down once more after picking up the Boots of Travel. Unfortunately for Bone 7, he's not been able to pick up anything else, and he is now 2-7. And a lot of hate coming from the Beastmaster this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just doing work. They are going just gung-ho. Any target they can acquire, they're able to lock them down good. And, and while we did see some good stuff with, like, Test of Faith and, and the bailout for Cancel earlier, it, there's just not enough time for the most part. Most of these heroes will be going down uh, within the time it takes to send somebody home the five-second teleport delay of the Test of Faith. So it, it definitely becomes difficult. You have to either use both Grave and Test of Faith on somebody, or they're just dead. And that, that makes it a very difficult situation to deal with because Danish Bears are just as ready to fight in a sustained manner. They're going to TP top. They've already taken the bottom tier two, and they didn't even take hardly any damage up top. Top, they're looking for Sing right now. He will be able to sidestep the Tornado. He gives himself the bow just for the good rum, but they've already made their catch. He's going to X to pull back the Beastmaster here, who is holding the roar. Not going to be able to get close enough to put it off, though. Singh has been able to make it away from trouble. That is a rare sight this game for Kaipi, yeah. though, unfortunately for them. But Nate is happy to pick up the pieces where Singh left off. He does get caught out, and he does not make it away. They had the nuke potential there with the Purifying Flame, so he can't make it out with the TP. And Danish boys are now up 19 to Kaipi 6. Yeah, that Aether Lens, Purifying Flames damage and range is just disgusting. He's always going to be able to, to finish the job if somebody's very, well, narrowly escaping death. But it was uh, great from Sync to have, obviously pull back the Beastmaster, but I'm kind of surprised that the Evoker went for the Alacrity there. He, he kind of assumed that the, the kill was a given when he probably could have put out a, like, a Deafening or, or something else that would have just made it a little bit more plausible for them to get that kill. Here comes the Danish boys now to mid lane. I can call them Danish boys when they're the Bears. Bears is so much more manly, I feel like I'm disrespecting him. Sorry, fellas, but they continue to dance around here. X will be sent out, but there'll be no torrent follow-up, except for when he makes it to the tower. But Flame Break doesn't matter. They get their Tier 2, and they look like they're on a ob objective to-do list at this point, Blaze, getting the most out of the map while they can with the Aegis here. Ace, X, Boat goes out even, but... None of it really landing. Dyer's I guess just more outspam here from Kai P. And the Danish Bears are kind of circling around the exterior of the base, hoping for Beastmaster to get the catch once again onto Bone here with the roar. He keeps thinking about it, but no Radiant's trigger will be pulled yet. They're just going to go hardcore for the high ground. While the Amber Spirit's still working on a battle three, they're going to be breaking the base. They're they going to connect with the Tornado. Now, yeah. The Tornado EMP, he's going to be stuck with a very Dyer's little blue bar at this point. While the... Bears have already gone in for Dyer's the tier three. Glyph now going to be forced. Kaipi are splitting up the map here. Cancel at the top. And uh, it was mad working at the bottom. He does make his retreat Dyer's back to the base, and that's going to be enough. The Bears pull out at this point. And, uh, you know, they could s consider finally, you know, paying a visit to the northern part of this map. Still a tier one and a tier two there for them. Hmm. So there's some free money on the map, Blaze. Yeah, they definitely have the full power to take that, and I think that would solve one of the problems they're having where just constantly Kaipi are, are splitting the top lane uh, because it's the most convenient for them. Uh, the fact is, there's no way that Kaipi fight into the Aegis here, so they go ahead, they just try to ride it out as best they can and keep their mobile heroes here. Unless you have a blink on the Beastmaster, you can't really punish that, so Hesta Joe is kind of just, just walking it in. And, and as such, I, I do feel like just pushing out top tier 1, top tier 2 would be the most methodical. But uh, already, smoke up top here. We've got yeah. three heroes ready to fight, and Hesta Joe seems to be the target. Anything they can get, it's going to be a huge net worth swing. you got to talk about how Danish Bears are very far ahead at this point, about 12k. So even if they get one pick off here on a Beastmaster, it could earn them a huge purse. Can they get it? Bone looks Barely. for it. He's running in the old-fashioned way, but the roar will be there. Eventually, the lasso shows up. Can he get close enough for the save? No! Oracle very close with the Aether Lens, but not close enough. They finally get the grab on the Beastmaster, and 
I wanted to see if a fight recap was going to pop up. I'd love to see even the boost from that, but um, I'm sure that alone was a couple of thousand gold. Oh, wait, here it is. Oh, a little over a thousand. So, big pickup, obviously, but uh, it's a, it's still very telling that, oh, and Bone Seven gets nightmared. He's going to get gripped, and he's going to be going down. And he still doesn't have his Blink Dagger. Like, he bought a Ring of Regen just to, be again, be efficient with his unreliable gold, but he, well, might isn't guaranteed to die here, but it's highly probable. Cancel does step in, tries to bodyguard Bone Seven with a good set of chains and bone now playing with the uh, realities of this map, makes it up to the pedestal of a high ground here. Hawk. But they got the Hawk. Hawk, though, could be coming a bit too late. Bone has heading east here. Good movement from Bone. This is, this is the only way you get out of it, is just going as far towards the enemy base as possible, ironically. And, uh, it does have about 10 more seconds before he can make the TP out, and by then I'm sure the Danish Bears will realize. They, they're thinking they got him still cut Daya's off and they're waiting for him to fly out from either attack. side, but the jig is up. He's already made his way out, and Kaipi do have a couple of extra minutes to work with now to farm across the map to try to get themselves Daya's a bit more relevant tower. in this game. Attack. Even Singh committing his boat and all to just try to keep the lanes pushed. Mid lane tier 1 is supple and could be the second or third actually tower grab here for Kai P. While top lane, it looks like finally Daya's Blaze the Danish Bears are going to be able to get rid of this tier 1 and, and make their presence from the north. Is under attack. A very telling aspect of this game is the fact that Pinkvin has only cast Ghostwalk like Radiant's once, maybe twice. So this... He hasn't really had to play defensively at all. He's just been able to look for the long-range catches, all that initiation that they, they've kind of been lacking. And he's been able to play the Quasuex Evoker in a very different manner than the Norm. Obviously, like you mentioned earlier, the Daya's Orchid is going to be great against the, like, heroes like the Ember, the Dazzle. But and just the fact that he hasn't really had to wor worry about disengaging, that he's able to just fight with his team is a very different style Radiant's than uh, what you normally see. You normally, like, Evoker plays like a Clinks when he's offensive, and uh, he, he otherwise just you know, tries to use his speed and, and invis to disengage but here we're just seeing him go right for the, the base with his teammates here and it, it seems like the right play yeah they got the tier one the tier two and why not continue to make the most out of this lane while you got the chance there's not much contention happening elsewhere mid lane a, a brief push from cancel while bottom the chen is trying to split the extra pressure here and finally force the danish bears back they're not letting up just yet here so they can't really sustain this too much more, though. They don't have an Aegis on the Gyrocopter, and they, they put him at risk quite significantly. Batrider now finally has the Blink Dagger and, and does have an opportunity here if Singh gets a really good Torrent. They're probably going to wait for this next wave, and if Data Spares push, we're going to see a boat and we're going to see a response. But obviously, it's taken it's uh, too long. They, they're kind of fatigued, worn down from all the, the Torrents and long range harassment, and. Uh, well, Batrider is still going to be in some trouble. Yeah, he finally gets his Blink Dagger here, but he also gets hit up with a nice little cold snap coming out from Ping, and that leads to a Batrider takedown. If they were a bit more together at this point, they could now make a, a push for the high ground, not having to worry about that pesky lasso, but for now, they'll just take it as a free pick. So all day, it ends up being that Tier 1, Tier 2, a Batrider kill. Still things very successful for them. 7 to 20, a net worth lead still above 10k here. Um, but we have to touch base here with Cancel on the Ember Spirit. He's the dark horse for this team to be able to pull it out later. Uh, has the boots to travel and is slowly built up towards a 2k gold. Oh, is it going to be safely farming, which is the right call to make because uh, Invoker ghost walking on the move with the Orchid is a very scary sight for an Ember. Yeah. So I feel like Kaipi do have some potential to drag this game out to look for the, the long-term turtle. The Holy Battle Fury Ember with the Bat Rider, uh, with the Kunkka, you have some really good potential high ground defense. So I think that it is actually really important that Danish Bears take a lane with the next Roshan. I don't think that Kaipi have really much potential to fight into Rosh unless they get like a five-man boat out of Sig Sing. I feel like Danish Bears have the clear Roshan. And from there, they should look to take this BKB, take this Aegis, and take it to the high ground. Because if they can't actually break the base of this row cycle, it's going to become harder and harder as time goes by. Certainly. The, the late game is decent from the Danish Bears, but uh, against an Ember and a Sing Sing Kunkka, I, I don't know if you want to take that kind of a gamble. Bowen is again, I guess, in his own world, creating a bit of space here. Getting in the face of Invoker a bit, then setting off to the woods where he could always TP away from trouble. And we'll try to even, maybe even cut the wave here a bit. Yeah, it's going to be a very annoying bat rider. While the Danish Bears need Daya's to stall things out for the Roche. Secondary timer is very short. In fact, it's already up now, and they might have seen it with the courier flying over, but 
They have already made their moves elsewhere. It looks like Ping might have spotted out the Chen, but there's a rotation in from Cancel. Quick hit with the Orchid stops him from getting off anything else, and now the heals will fly out from the Oracle, and that will be the retreat there for Kai P. And that should be, as well, the attempt for Roshan if they do scout it out here with the Hawk. It looks like they will. Now we'll see if they quickly head that direction, or if they want to push out mid lane probably, keep Kai P Force inside their base. They saw that last time they went for the Roche. Kai P did end up showing up. It was a bit too late, but with a smoke, so they are a team that could be there to contest, especially when you have a Bat Rider in your roster. So the move has been made. They go inside the pit here. They pop down their book. Still only level two. But with this takedown of the Roche, we'll get him that much closer to the level three. And as you said, they need to make a lot of work happen with this Aegis. Preferably inside the base of Kai P, because this game, you don't want to be racing against the clock with this one. Yeah, I mean, they can still look at, like, Refresher, Beastmaster, Divine, Gyro, and have crazy late game, but they don't need to. Like, they're at such an advantage right now, they can solidify that. Bone 7 will get the jump up top, that will be cancelled coming in as well, but they need the Centaur stun, they need all the lockdown, it's gonna be the Bowden Torrent to secure it, while bottom, they go hard onto Mad. Now, they get Mad, but what what might have not been seen right before that is Cancel's rotation to the top lane was just a breath of a moment away from being cancelled. Beastmaster made the blink jump, his arms were in the air for the roar, but it didn't connect in time, and Cancel was able that's to the, make his rotation to the, the top That's the problem, lane. dude. That's the problem. You don't roar with your arms. You roar, you yeah. roar with your mouth. Come on. The efficiency like. is just let the mouth do the work. There, there's no bother with making the whole tribute with the axes in the air, and because of that, it's going to be Kaipi who do get a kill to the top lane. And, and the same goes for what I said before. Maybe even more so is any kill at this point for Kaipi is going to be a huge boost of a of, of gold of a gold boost. So taking down someone like Invoker, uh, especially by Someone like the Chen will get him a huge net worth boost here, and it looks like suddenly he has Greaves and is building up into possibly a four staff. Yeah, Greaves is extremely important this game. You can dispel Orchid. Uh, it doesn't cost any mana to use your mech. Obviously, it gives you mana with the Arcane Boot Factor. It's, it's very important against the Wex Voker, like uh, above all else. So uh, it's definitely nice that they're going to have that available. But in the end, I don't feel like the Chen's going to be able to do the heavy lifting. They have to really outplay via the Kunkka of Sing Sing as well as the Ember of Cancel. Voker Tornado is oh. going to miss, but there is a response. Orcs get like five Link, Voker. Is that Lasso, Torrent, Bolt. Where's the assistance? Oracle's here, and he's going to be committing the False Promise. We'll be able to keep him alive and well. Quickly, Kai P will 180 out of there. Right call to make because still probably not feeling that confident in a full team fight. Almost get the pick, though. Yeah, really, just the, the range of initiation and counter-initiation here from Noya's Oracle. You, you can never really feel confident that there's not going to be the response team, because this guy can be so far away to still get that ulti out. I mean, that range is practically a screen in width. Like, that is a very, very powerful uh, range of ultimate, and he's even going to get some, some hits on the Batrider here, but... Uh, I, they have to obviously group up. They still have to get everybody together. The Gyrocopter is obviously not here and ready to fight just yet. He's got the BOTs to come in if the creep wave is there. They're flirting around quite a bit with Bone, which has gotten the Oracle close enough for the X combo, but he preemptively does the Fates Edict to take no damage, but I like Sing's mind games. He doesn't commit with the Torrent right away, waits instead, then hits him when the Fates Edict does cancel. Uh, but here comes Danish Bears. It's the final wing of this Aegis Blaze. This is the time for the push. This is when they need to get oh. something done, and they catch out Bone with the Primal Roar. Now the Grave will be there. Glimmer force everything they can to save him, even Mad giving his own life for it. But now they've turned their attention towards the mid lane. They take the tier three. They get a nice grip on the Sing and finish him off. Oh, this might have been the push that leads to the victory here for the Danish Bears. Almost getting canceled. Will take him down. He's out, no buyback for just about a minute. Danish Bears now finally can step back, go for the actual prize, and that is this mid lane set of racks. Sing trying his best with the with the buyback here to slow them down, even flame breaks flying out, but at this point it might be too late to save and salvage what's left in the mid lane. In fact, Danish Bears even looking for the same movement here at the top lane blaze. Could this be game ending? It definitely could. I mean, you've already bought back on the Kunkka. He has to make this final boat worthwhile. You have to go in hard. You have to be able to disable. 
three heroes in a single boat. If they just spread out, they've got this fight, they've got this game. But we're going to see a couple cooldowns popped out from the Oracle here. He's exhausting a lot just to make sure the gyrocopter is full, and they do find both seven on the side. Well, they don't have to find him. He jumps right into him, but doesn't have much else to offer with the lasso already being on cooldown. It just takes a simple cold snap to finish him off. It looks like it will be the Danish Bears, uh, Bears securing not one, but two sets of racks here. This is going to put Kai P. Well, their backs, if they weren't against the wall now, they're flat down on their back, laying on the ground because it is looking rough. They do catch the X here onto the Oracle, hoping to get some pickoffs here on the way out. Could get them at least a huge network boost. Catch the Danish Bears at their weakest when they've already expelled so much, but they still have lots of sustain here, Blaze. They are going to finally get the catch work onto Oracle, but that's when they made their turnaround. The Roar's back up, and they're going for the finishing blow here. Cancel is going to get saved up from the grave, so they change targets for the Chen. They'll take him out instead. Cancel is able to make it away, but not so lucky for one of the support staff. Ace, not going to be caught out from the boat. Good save with the help of the Glimmer. Cancel's back from the Fountain. Moves in hard with the remnant here, but not going to be able to get the chains grab with the slide of fist. Danish Bears make it a long intervention inside the Kaipi base, but finally they've walked away, Blaze, and they've walked away very rich. Two sets of racks down, plethora of kills, 9 to 26. Net worth probably getting over 20k. It is. It's all great from here for Danish Bears in game one. Yeah, it's it's nearly insurmountable at this point. Kaipi will probably go for push out lanes and then go for one very desperate smoke play. But in the end, it just seems like from from the mid game where Danish Bears were outplaying them, uh, Kaipi weren't really able to get a foothold. It, early on, they wanted to push towers, they wanted to take early fights, and almost no kills were going their way. Danish Bears were able to respond every time Kaipi went offensive. They at least traded like three for one, if not preventing any deaths for their own side. So. This built up the gyrocopter very quickly. This allowed their team as a whole to just have this massive experience event. I mean, just look at the, the experience graph. Uh, by the like 17, 18 minute mark, they were already over 10,000 ahead. And like, sure, there was a little bit of a swing back there for Kaipi as, as they got to trade a few kills. But when you're that far behind that early, know, noting that all these kills have been denied to you, it's almost impossible for you to gain momentum and traction. Looks like they will get a forgiving pick off there on the Bane, who happened to just be far from home and out on his own. Does cost their lasso Radiant's for the commitment here, but Kaipi now with advantage in numbers and not worrying about the Bane. They feel confident about this. This could be their all or nothing play to take those steps for a turnaround here, but they're not going to be able to get ping. Roar comes out. It's again going to be on the bone. They'll take out the Bat Rider, and the rest of Kaipi quickly make their retreat away before there are more casualties in this one. You know, it's a shame the Oracle, I mean, don't get me wrong, Greaves, fabulous item this game. Uh, certainly the heal benefits his whole arsenal, especially False Promise. Uh, I don't know, in this particular game, when you realize your False Promise is such a huge, huge tool, I would have said even a Blink Dagger could have been just as valuable. It might have even saved the, the Bane in that I mean, last Again, push. like, highlight this spell, dude. This spell is such a long range. He has yeah. not really missed any opportunities here to, to save. Even when Ace is really far forward, they're always keeping within range of each other. So, yeah, I love Blink, but either lens can do a, a fraction of the job, and it, it's all, more on Ace to not be too far away from the Oracle. Hopefully he has that fast trigger finger to get the catch. Because once Bone is able to get the grab and force staff out, it will be even out of the craziest of range from that ether lens. Hasn't been a problem yet because more so it's been Bone getting caught out before the fight can even begin. But here come the Danish Bears looking for their last set of racks to close out just game number one. It is a best of three, but it's also a single elimination. You lose the series, you're out. You cannot make it to the land here for the Star Ladder I League Invitational. Tier 3 now down Blaze. Last set of racks already exposed. There is no Aegis here on the side of Danish Bears, but we have mighty weapons coming out with the help of this, even this MKB from Ace. They're playing this one pretty disciplined though. Only taking what they can. The jump in, the roar. Again, it's on the Bat Rider. They fall for the call down. Boat will come out and ascend back to the base will keep them alive. But there's already a hard commi commitment from the Bears. They get a nice grip on for Singh. Grave keeps him alive briefly, but it's not going to be enough. He's going to be out for a minute without a buyback. And now the Oracle, saving himself with a good Fates Edict and Purifying Flames combo, and they will finally take down Bone, and he will say that's game. Tal has been thrown. It's Danish Bears who will take game number one of this best of three. Extremely well executed. That's the bottom line. If you just go back and look at each and every one of those fights, it just it felt like 
Canis Bears were on a completely different level. The way they were able to react to tough situations, the way they were able to respond. Of course, they drafted themselves into that. They drafted the Oracle Bane and against the Bone 7 Bat. Uh, they drafted the long duration lockdown that could punish the Ember Spear. Like, I feel like Danish Bears' draft was really on point, but I feel even more so their, their play and their micromanagement of situations where they're like, okay, well, this person's got three different three or four different spells flying at them one nightmare dispels it that happened three times this game gyrocopter ends the game 9 0 and 15 not entirely to ace's credit much more so to noia and rise just playing an immaculate game of support we'll see if kaipi can be able to shake this one off and bounce back to take it to a three game series or if danish bears will continue their hot streak and close this out one out two zero i'm connell guy that's blaze we'll be back after a small break for game number two of Kai P versus the Danish Bears. <laughs> 